Hi everybody, Jill here again. Thanks so much for popping in. As always, lovely to spend time with you. Now, I'm afraid I'm staying a bit on the festive theme today. Um, I mean, I'm going to create a Christmas card design, but in all honesty, this could be something to go in your journal, in your scrapbook, but also it could be if somebody's got a birthday, you know, sort of round December, January, February. And for those of you that live where you have lovely hot sunny weather at Christmas I think you could mix this up a bit and make this a beach scene in here so again it's all about just joining me having a bit of crafty time together and getting a little bit of inspiration but then it's up to you you can mix it up a bit you could use different stamps couldn't you and you could use this could be say somebody had um, a wedding around Christmas time. I mean, I think the bells will be beautiful. It's nice to use the musical notes. I love those. And I think around Christmas, they're beautiful. But this could be, instead of the little pixie houses, you could maybe have two of the little wild hares, you know, maybe bride and groom getting married. I mean, do you know what? So many possibilities. And I love that, that just a design can be taken in so many different ways. As always, look, I've decorated the envelope. Nice, simple stamping. So if it gets wet, it doesn't matter. And a little bit of Posca snow, which again is permanent once dry. And as I like to do on the back, look, a nice little bit of the design again nothing too fancy just enough that it ties beautifully so i'm going to start now as always i'm going to use a piece of multi fairies card and this one is five and a half inches square and i'm going to come in with my um acetate circle mask and i've used two colors of blue of two colors of blue at all that doesn't make sense, does it? Do you know I'm still going through that at the minute? I don't know if I'm just overtired. You know when the words don't come out as you want them to? So if I say anything that's random, please do excuse me. All I can do is apologise. I'm blaming my age. Do you know what? I feel it at the minute. Life's good, but busy. Now, I'll go back and we'll start again. We'll rewind that. I'm going to use two colours of Elements ink today. One's the blue at all and one's the violet chalk just because I think they give almost like a nice crisp sort of that lovely feel around Christmas and I've got my two stencil brushes and these are the larger ones, the number nine and I'm going to actually, this is going to be the base of my card but I find it easy because I want the ink look on this area here and I find it easy to flick the ink away from me rather than towards me, if that makes sense. And it's all about making it easy for yourself. So I'm just going to off-centre it slightly. And I'm going to take the lids off my ink pads. And we're going to blend, as I always do. And I'm so chuffed. I've done quite a lot of workshops recently. And it's lovely because they've been in-person workshops. And it's lovely to see how many of you now pop the ink in the lid and take it from the lid. I do think it's a game-changer. And again, give it a good blend and it'll blend it on your brush. So I'm just going to come in with the blue at all. And I want this sort of, it's almost, it's just above half, probably, I think is the best way to describe it. I'm going from here to here. So it's probably just more than half. But again, you can choose what sort of area you would like. And I'm just going to add some of the, Violet chalk now. And I just love the combination of this. But again, there are lots of other colours that we can blend. And don't worry how it looks because this is just that colour behind. And then what I'm going to do is turn it round, look, and then just bring in a little bit more with the blue at all, almost to fuzzy that edge. You see where I've got that straight edge? I like that, but I almost want to fuzzy it a bit. And, and I love the fact with, you know, inks and paper, you can do so much. And again, you can add as much colour as you want. I don't want this to be too sort of in your face, but if you want a nice bright card with bright colours, you go ahead. 
and have your bright colours. Now I'm just going to give this a white with my Inky Binky because if I don't, I'll, you know me, we'll get ink everywhere and we don't want that. So I'm going to bring in some stamping. So let me check you can see this. And the first stamp I'm going to use is from the Fairy Catkin set. Now, for those of you that are eagle-eyed, on this set, there are almost two of, of this shape look. And for me, it was ideal. I'm going to use the larger one on my card. But actually, on the back look, I use the smaller one. So it is a beautiful combination. And also, I use the smaller one on the envelope. And I just find they work so well together. You also get two smaller of the open catkin and the closed bud. So useful. Oh, honestly, I can't stop using this. And I know I shouldn't have favourite stamps, but mind you at the minute, there are so many. <laughs> and I'm going to use my Versafine Clay, so it's my permanent ink. And I'm coming in with the black, the Nocturne for this. But again, you could use a coloured ink for this. I'm just thinking if I was batch card making and hadn't got a lot of products, what would I use? And I'm just going to put this, I want it sort of here. That sort of shape. I like the sort of almost semi-wreath design. In fact, I think that's what we need to call it, a semi-wreath. Hmm. I do like to name things. And I'm going to bring in the bells. Again, as I say, such a useful set. Now, your Christmas charms would look beautiful as well. But I just thought the bells, I want Matt, you know, the rejoicing, the singing. Maybe some Christmas carols. So we'll pop the bells there. And a little finishing touch with the bells with my Micron pen. And I'm just checking this is my black one because I have the brown as well. Just going to add a couple of little, so it looks like my bells are, are moving. And I'm just going to give them a little bow there. I'm not going to overthink it, look, so that they're hanging there. I like that. And then I'm just going to find my small pixie houses. These are little tinkers. I've been using them a lot recently. And you know when you have some stamps that just keep disappearing? Pippin does that on me a lot. And these do... I keep losing one out of the three. At the minute, I've got all three. So I'm just hoping I can keep them. And I'm going to stamp them probably the large one in the middle. Always do him first. Give him a wipe. Again, I don't want to pick him up and then get ink on my fingers because there's a bit of quite a bit of white space on this and it's important to try and keep it white space. Now, I have a thing with these little houses. I don't know about you, but I have to stamp them so that the little chimneys are on the outside. You know, when I stamp them as a three, I have to have the little chimneys on. <laughs> That's probably, again, I'm probably telling you too much information about me. But I think you know I'm a bit strange by now. Strange world, things that go on in my head. But I have to say, I love just coming up with ideas using these stamps. And then one idea leads to another and another. I'm just going to pop the third one there. If you haven't got the little, the small pixie houses, maybe pipping in here, like I say. Right, I'm just going to put that back on there because I don't want to lose those. I'm going to give that a little blot. Just again, Versafine Claire, slower drying ink. Then I'm going to come in with my music notes. Now, we've got the small and the large, and these are off the small. But again, you could mix and match. Now, I'm afraid I'm not musical. Um, and I know there are probably those of you out there that are. So if I stamp these upside down, please... I do apologise. But I just want some nice, as I say, musical tunes. 
and those of you that have got the music notes i'd love to see you using them more and i think christmas is a perfect time now let's think this one let's alter the angle a little pop that one there and then one more the little one on its own I remember learning the recorder at school. I don't know about you, but certainly when I was at school, everybody had to learn the recorder. And at the school I was in, in the Lake District, they didn't have enough recorders for everybody to learn on. So we had to have a ruler, a 12-inch ruler, and practice. I'm going to put another one here. Um, with a ruler and pretend that was a recorder now i probably shouldn't be telling you this i mean it, it was a lovely school but these things you know we say today that children haven't got everything but you know sometimes i think they've actually got a lot more than i had and it's so funny because now when i when i hear the screeches of somebody learning a recorder now i agree it's beautiful when it can be played properly but when you're learning oh unless it was just me my sister and me we were very screechy <laughs> especially when we were playing a 12 inch ruler <laughs> it is funny i did go on to play the flute after that but it, it just still makes me laugh right now i'm going to add one of the birds now, I'd love to hear if there are things like that that happened to you when you were at school. I'd love you to put it in the comments. And it's nice because it makes you just bring back some memories. And it might be you're on your own. I know a lot of you are on your own at home crafting. And it's so nice that we can share memories together. Now, I'm just going to pop one of the birds here. And what's lovely is the music notes he's singing as well. Now, if you want to make him into a robin, you can. This one, I think I'm going to leave him as a blackbird. But again, look at that. I just think that's such a lovely composition. And again, it follows the line that way. So we'll give him a blot. And then just going to add a little bit more detail. So I'm going to come in with my new mini hill masks. And we're going to use the blue at all, but I'm coming in with the middle brush now, the number seven. And I think this one will give me that shape of the hill look. And if I do it this way, remember we're talking about this the other day. I'll actually be adding colour for the sky, but underneath it will look like snow. And I'm also purposely on this design, adding more ink in this corner and going paler over here. Can you see, because I really want the design to almost fade out in this corner of the card. And I'm just going to add a little bit just under. And in fact, I'm going to come in with my smaller brush, my Diddy one, my number three. And just add a little bit of shadow under each of my little houses. And again, that will just look like shadow and the rest is snow. And what we can just have is a tiny, just a little, just a mere suggestion look of some snow there. We'll give that a wipe. I have got a new Inky Binky, I just haven't used it yet. And then I'm going to get the small of my circle masks. And we'll add the moon. Now again, I'm just going to turn this this way. It's easier for me. I'm going to pop it over the bell. So it's almost a two. I'm using it as the moon, but also to spotlight the bells. And again, my number seven brush. I'm just going to pop them there. And just gently, gently. And I'm coming in with the purpley tones for this. Just to keep that blue and that purple together. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more here. So we've got a little bit of a cloud. I'm not going to add any more ink. Just use the ink that's on my brush. And almost just drift it across, look. Like that. And as I say, you can use as much colour as you wish. And we'll give that mask a wipe and pop that away 
I'm going to add a little bit of colour. Now, I'm going to colour the catkins blue. And I know those of you that are going to tell me they're not blue. But for this, it's artistic license. I just think they'll go nicely with the design. And I'm using my, my watercolour pencils. Look, I was so carried away with my colouring then, I forgot to tell you what I was using. And I've just gone for a dark blue and almost like a turquoise blue. So again, this is my sort of cheats colouring. So I'm just putting the dark blue traces. Been very good to her. She's put little dots where the darker colour would be. And then I'll come in and again, I'm leaning on my kitchen towel. Good habits. Just in case I've got any ink on my hand. And I do apologise if there's a bit of shadow on this. It's so dark here today. So for those of you that have got lovely sunny weather at the minute, we've had some floods and very dark, wet weather. And Eric is sat, just in case you can hear him, bless him, he's snoring again. I'm sure he does it on purpose. He waits till I do a, a video and then he decides to snore. So I've got my watercolour brush here, look, and I'm going to start at the light bit of the blue and then go into the dark. And with each one, I'm popping my brush back in the water to clean it just because I want to start with the lighter blue and then go into the dark. Again, mixing that light and then into the dark. Now, I have to say these, I've done so many colours. I've done the oranges and yellows on the catkins. I've done reds. The blues looks nice. I mean, honestly, I love the fact that when we have a stamp, we can become the artist. As you know, I'd love to be an artist. I'm not. I'd love to be. But I just think having stamps and, and having products like inks, pencils, we can become an artist and really play. I'm just going to drag that colour there because that will be darker at the base there. And I'm going to come in with one of my clean colour pens here. And this is the Zig Pens, and this is number 51, Lemon Yellow. Now, you could use a gel pen for this. I just want to add some light. I think it's nice to have an accent colour, and that's what my yellow is going to be. But also, it almost just brightens up the whole design. And then, a little tip. I could have coloured the berries with my Zig Pens, but I've got to be honest, because I intend making a, a lot of this card... I'm, I'm a bit thrifty and I, I was worried about using all my ink up. And that's probably silly because these pens will probably colour lots and lots of cards. But I love them so much. Um, and I'm from the Lake District, you see. We're very thrifty. So I'm using my watercolour pencils. But also I'm going to come over the top with... Oh, and this is number 37, Cornflower Blue. And I'm actually just going to add a little bit of shade at the base look. Now, obviously, remember... These are water-based, so they blend beautifully. So you can use them over the top of your watercolour pencils. Use them in conjunction with your watercolour pencils. And I just think that little bit at the base there, look, just helps to make those lovely catkins pop. So a couple more finishing tricks. And we're just going to come in with a white the Signo pen and I'm just going to add some little dots look and a few little lines just a little bit here and here now again I can add and even though it isn't quite dry it will go over the top what I found is if I add white Posca over the top, it doesn't stay white, but this does. I'm just going to add a little bit of snow around my lovely houses. And then I can just dot, dot some little bits, look here, around his feet. Just where the snow would sort of accumulate in these little 
nooks and crannies. Now, if you don't know what those are, in the Lake District, they're just little areas, little sort of nooks and crannies. I don't know what you'd call them. Little spaces. It's the sort of space where dust collects. I've got to be honest, that's a nook and a cranny. Now, our final finishing touches, I'm going to add the sentiment. Now, we've got some beautiful new sentiments. And one of them, which is an absolute favourite of mine, is from Our House to Yours. And also, if you notice, I've put it on my block slightly curved because I think that will go so well with the design. And I think with having the little pixie houses, I think it goes well as well because we've got the little houses, haven't we? So from our home to yours. And I'm just going to pop that on that lovely angle there. Now, if you want to add any glitter, now will be the time to add some glitter. I'm just going to come in with my Wink of Stella pen and add a little bit around the moon. Just a little. And just on that snow line there, on the hill, just where you'd get that little bit. And that's all I'm... That's enough sparkle. And finally, we need some snow. So I'm coming in with my Posca pen. And again, a few of you have asked recently, the size of the nib, this is the one, this is the five. The five will just give me bigger splats of snow. And I don't really want big lumps of snow on this. So I'm going for my one. And look, I've written on it. It's my favourite snow one. So I'm going to give it a shake. And I don't want to overcook it with the snow. So just over the bells, look. And almost following my catkin down here. And because that's where I've put the ink underneath, your snow will show up better. So just and a little bit round here, round the houses. As I say, I don't want to overcook it. And then if I lift that up to show you, and I just think that's such a lovely Christmas design. And I'll bring in the original one. I always love to do this and then I see how, how if I've done it any different. Because I do find it hard making the same thing twice. Even when a batch card made make things, I tend to just have it slightly different. I don't know about you. Just gives me something to, I mean, I've used different and different music notes look anyway i hope you enjoyed that and thank you for spending a little bit of time with me and i hope you're getting on with your christmas cards i must admit i've got quite a few made now and every time i do one of these videos and i've got to be honest i really do enjoy making these i've been creating them but just in different colors and i've got quite a box full now so thank you for joining me and helping me get my christmas cards made I think it's probably the first year I've actually, I'm, I'm ahead. That doesn't happen very often. So I hope you have a lovely week. I'm going to take a day off tomorrow. I think, definitely, walk Eric, have some cups of coffee, and you know what, just spend some time outside and get some lovely fresh air. So you take care of yourselves and pop back, and I'll spend some time with you again soon. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.